الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحب ربنا ويرضى يا ربي لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وخليله بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة وكشف الله به الغمة وجاهد في سبيل ربه حتى أتاه اليقين اللهم ارزه عنا وعن والدينا وعن الإسلام والمسلمين خير ما جازيت به نبيا عن قومه ورسولا عن أمته اللهم أحينا على سنته وتوفنا على ملته وأوردنا حوضه واسقنا من يده الشريفة شربة هنيئة لا نظمأ بعدها أبدا اللهم اجمع بيننا وبينه كما آمنا به ولم نره ولا تفرق بيننا وبينه حتى تدخلنا مدخله ثم أما بعد My dear respected brothers and sisters um, Since we are going to start inshallah um, tonight um, uh, a history class um, I thought it might be a good idea to, to talk about the importance of studying history um, with the objective that um, um, I hopefully can convince you to come and attend, inshallah, this um, uh, class. People usually ask, um, we are so busy with our present and somehow worry about the future. So why bother studying the past? We don't have time or energy to uh, um, study the past. We're just focusing so much on the immediate need um, today and the need of the near future. Uh, others argue that the results of engineering or people in science and medicine, we can see that the result of their work tangible and immediate. Engineers build roads and highways and bridges and tunnels, uh, buildings which think we can see, and doctors also innovate new treatments and medicine and so on. So what do historians do? What is the real value of being a historian uh, or to study um, uh, history. Um, I would argue today that history is extremely useful and some historians actually say it's not only useful, it's essential, although the result is less immediate and less tangible. Um, studying history in the past used to um, serve the objective of being distinguished um, uh, or to, to make the distinction between the educated and the less educated people. People usually um, quote terminologies and names of the past just to show that they are um, uh, well informed and highly educated. But in fact, the study of history goes way beyond this. And I'll just um, summarize the, what I believe to be the importance of studying history in few uh, quick points. One of the most important um, benefits of studying history is that studying history helps us understand people and societies. And to make sense of the world in which we live, we have to go back to see what causes the world to be the way it is today. Our world today, as we see it and live in it, is nothing but accumulation of human experience in different fields. And similarly, for us to imagine our future, we have to act now if we want really to bring about a um, constructive and meaningful change in the future. And sociologists actually attempted to develop a number of laws or theories about how things happen. And this is exactly what Al-Quran Al-Kareem talked about. قُلْ سِيرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ فَانْظُرُوا كَيْفَ كَانَ عَاقِبَةُ الْمُكَذِّبِينَ Similar situations as yours have passed on before you, so proceed throughout the earth and observe how was the end of those who denied. As there are laws that um, um, physicists and, and people in science study, there are also laws in civilizations and societies. The systems we know today, the economical system, the political system, the social system, educational system did not just come out of the blue, but again, it has been developed over time, and it's important for us to be oriented, to know where we're coming from, and um, hopefully we can tell where we are um, going to. So studying these sunan, these laws or theories of history is more than memorizing or knowing historical information. 
can read a book so you can get the information, but there's a big difference between getting this information and being able to analyze this information to reach conclusions that's useful for us today and the future. And this is what Ibn Khaldun actually started, one of the great Muslim um, uh, um, philosophers and historians, and um, many believe that he is the founder of sociology as we understand it today. Um, he wrote a wonderful book called Tariq, uh, Al -Al -Tariq, uh, or Tariq Ibn Khaldun, and the introduction of this book of history is amazing, and I encourage you all to uh, find it and read it. In this muqaddimah, it's known as al-muqaddimah, the introduction of history, in which he laid down the sunan and the laws that um, control the human behavior and how civilizations emerge, get stronger, and then get weaker, and then they die. And he applied this to all civilizations, and interestingly, it fits perfectly for every uh, civilization, including Islamic civilizations. So history serves, importantly, serves as, as the evidential basis for us. It is a huge bank of information. That's the only source for us to present evidence when we analyze the um, uh, historical events. Also, history influences our life. Um, as Americans, as Muslims, we can tell where we get this or that from, why, why we behave this way. To be a good Muslim, it means that you have to be aware of history. Because every reading of the Quran, even if you read the Quran in a superficial level, you cannot miss the fact that Al Quran emphasized the importance of history and telling us stories. Big portion of Al Quran is nothing but stories. The story of Adam and the story of Nuh, السلام, Ibrahim, Musa, and Isa, and um, Shu'aib, and Salih. These stories have been mentioned in a big portion of Al Quran. And Al Quran makes points through history. Al Quran uses history as an evidence that people cannot deny. This is what happened. Right? So knowing history means that we need to understand how history affects us positively or negatively. Positive, positively or negatively. Just going for Hajj or Umrah, it's, to me, it's, it's an open history book. When you go to Medina and Mecca, everywhere, every spot in Mecca and Medina and between, it reminds us of something significant happened at the time of the Prophet وسلم, which affect our life today. And our huge particular historic events that's still affecting us today. The fact that Muslims are divided into Sunni and Shia, this emerged as a sequence of events in a particular time. And still, up until now in Ashura, we have the Shia Muslims, they celebrate it in a certain way that reflects their understanding of history. And this division manifested or have been materialized in, in Muslim areas. We hear about these wars and conflicts and, and, and bloodshed. It's because the Umayyads in the past, they killed the grandson of the Prophet وسلم, and they established a new political system, a dynasty, the Umayyad dynasty. It established this dictatorship and replaced Shura with dictatorship. Whoever is powerful can consume power and rule, and then the king appoint his son to be the next king, and so on and so forth. And this is influencing us and affecting us as how we understand our life and how we have been divided. So it's important to understand that history is no longer a boring book that people, most of the people don't like actually to read. Right? But now history has been uh, told in so many different ways. It's a novel, it's a movie, um, animation, biographies that combine both artistic aspect and huma hum human aspect as well. So you watch a movie, sometimes people cry because they saw how these soldiers fought and how these pious and good people have been murdered. 
it's telling history in different ways. And they used to say that history um, will told is beautiful. So it's not only one way of telling history. History also help us to test our moral values and moral sense. When we read the history of people of courage, um, people who um, weathered so many challenges faithfully, this, this reminds us of, of or, or help us compare our lifestyle with their lifestyle, our moral values with their moral values. It's not just um, history or, or, or um, a work of um, uh, fiction that talks about some heroes. It's a real people. Real people like you and I were put in uh, very difficult situations, but they managed to weather these situations because of their faith and their principles. When we read the Quran, also the Quran tells us clearly, do you think that you'll enter paradise without going through the same harsh experience that those who came before you went through? Do you think that that easy to claim they are Muslims and this in of itself will give you the ticket to paradise? In other words, the Quran says, no, this is not the way it works. The way it works is that you have to go through the test that other people went through. And we know the story, I'm sure you have heard a number of times when Khabbab Narat came to the Prophet وسلم, after being badly tortured and said, Ya Rasulullah, why don't you make dua for us? And then the Prophet وسلم, told him about what happened to the believers before us. Right? So when we study history, this will help us evaluate and assess our moral values comparing to um, others. History, importantly, also provide identity. We cannot live without identity. We have multiple identities. And each one of them comes from a certain way or a certain roots. And those people who feel rootless, they live kind of um, rootless life and they don't really have meaning for their life. They don't care. Where I came from does not make any um, um, importance to them. And of course, by this, people damage, of course, damage themselves and to others as well. But if you really want to see how important history is in giving and providing us identity, sense of identity, ask the African-American here why history is important and why Malcolm X called himself Malcolm X. Because he knows for sure that his last name given to him by his master it is not his real last name. And he does not belong to this last name. And since he does not really know what his real last name, then he decided to call himself Malcolm X because he has his roots in Africa. And, and denying the history, it means denying part of who we are as if you are taking part of someone's identity. Ask the Jews why history is very important for them, because it's, it's not just history. It is history, it's identity, it is theology. It's everything. It's everything for them. And they always say, never again. I visited Imam Abdullah al-Amin, uh, who at that time was the Imam of the Muslim Center, I was doing an oral history uh, class project, and I decided to interview him and to uh, do or conduct this interview based on what we learned in oral history methodology. And when I went to his office, I noticed very clearly, you can see that his office and the way that leads to his office as if you are in a museum. And a sign was hanged in, his, um, uh, in the wall of his office, where there are two arrows, one says white and other say for colors. And he said this um, sign is a real sign, it's not just not to make it up. He said that this is a real sign has was been there, posted somewhere um, for um, water fountain. So whites drink from one place. And I told him, why, why are you putting it here? And to me, it was like a reminder of humiliation in the past that people don't. I said, no, 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 we want to remember this. We don't want to forget about this. And he told me, don't you hear the Jews say never again regarding the Holocaust? We also 
remember this and say never again never again because it's part of who we are we have been through this and we don't want our children to suffer as we have suffered and interestingly um he took me uh gave me a tour in the masjid and uh there is a um like a small um uh, store where they sell clothes and books and so on and most of these things sold there are coming from africa and the name of this store inside the masjid was new africa and he asked me do you know what new africa means why do we call it new africa i said i have no idea he said you know when the european came to america here and discovered it and they they named the cities here with the same cities they had in europe so they have york in england so when they came to this piece of land in the far um, east they called it new york so every city that starts with new it has an origin somewhere in europe new jersey new york new orleans and so on and so forth so for him he said we are calling this new africa to remind us that we came from africa so history is extremely vivid and clear once you walk in Similarly, when you walk in any Shia masjid, you can see histories and, and choreography that reminds people of who they are and what identity they have. So for us as, as Muslims, American Muslims, studying history is part of our identity. And unfortunately, many Muslim young generations, they don't really have time or interest in studying history because to them it's not as important. And because it does not make money. And you just need to look at the market and be smart enough to get admitted into schools that would guarantee you a good job when you graduate. This is how we all think. But history is very important as part of our identity. And because it's part of our identity or people's identity, it, usually history has been abused. And we'll talk about this, inshallah, later on. Also, history is important and essential for good citizenship. To be a good citizen, this means that you need to know the history of your country. This is perhaps a new um, notion that came along with the modern state, but this is why it is. That's why they em uh, you know, emphasize the imp importance of putting history in the um, uh, school curriculum so the children will know history. And they knew, know quite well. They know about Martin Luther King. They know about the human rights movement. They know about George Washington. They know about you know, the first bill and the American Constitution. Our young children, they know about these things. And for those who want to uh, um, uh, get naturalized and become citizen, you know, they go through a test, right? Um, no, it's not very uh, thorough and deep, but they ask about the modern history of the country. What do you know about the country? And what does this flag mean? And so on. So to be a citizen, you need to know the, um, a good citizen, I, I, I mean, you need to know the history. Um, studying history help us assess evidence. That those who study history, they know how to assess um, evidence because they have tons of evidence and some of them are contradictory and many of them are not accurate. So how to assess the evidence as valuable, this is some, one of the skills that um, historians um, need to have and also um, how to assess the conflicting interpretations and um, reach the right conclusion. I just want to end by saying that um, our history is not only Islamic history. Because we have multiple identities, we have also multiple historical backgrounds. So for us as Muslims, we look at Islamic history as part of a larger field of studying that's called human history. Because Muslims, and did not live in isolation with the rest of the world. They have been influenced by others, and also they have influenced other civilizations. So our Islamic history is not just merely a theological history or history of a particular group of people. We need to understand this, and also we need not to make or to confuse Islamic history with Islam. Islamic history is not Islam. Islamic history is the history of people, of Muslims, who are not perfect. And when you read our 
Islamic history, we must understand that it's not perfect. And I know this can um, bring some controversy, but you know, from purely academic and scientific background, you don't want to pick and choose from history. You cannot just try to portray our ancestors, Muslim ancestors, as almost angels. They were not angels. They were humans. And there are plenty of things that we are proud of in our history, and plenty of incidents also we are ashamed of. Things that we wish did not exist. This example, the fitna, the conflict that happened after the assassination of Uthman radiallahu Most of us don't even like to read it about it. These are Sahaba killing each other. I know some of you maybe have been offended now, but this is history. This is our history. It's recorded in our books. All right? And if we don't create our own narrative, someone else will. So don't be surprised when someone brings to you this, okay, so this is what, what happened. And the first reaction is, no, 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 it cannot happen. No, it's just happened. He's read Al-Bukhari and read Ibn Kathir and read At-Tabari. It's your book. So our history is not perfect the way it was. And the writing of history is also not perfect. It's not 100% accurate. So that's why we need to assess the evidence and analyze it to reach the most accurate conclusion. But history is not all pure. And I know now in the, in the, um, there's a discussion about blasphemy law in some Muslim countries that if you dare to criticize one of the Sahaba, you are kafir, and then you should be executed. But that's not history. If you want to give good khutbah and talk about how great uh, Muslims were, then, then that, that, that's fine. But if you want to write an academic paper or write a book that has some value, then you need to be objective and to look at things, the good and the evil, the good and the bad, and just reach a scientific, objective conclusion. We cannot just pick and choose. If we really want to benefit from history, we need to benefit from the good things our ancestors did so that we repeat it, and we need also to learn from their mistakes so that we should avoid it. This is what Quran clearly said. Allah said clearly that this is what happened to the nations before you. These are the horrible mistakes they have done. Don't be like them. Because these were the consequences of their evil doing. And when we find something good, something worked, then we should emulate it. We cannot just look at the good things and ignore the bad things that happened in our, um, in our history. That, that's not the way we learn from history. To learn from history is to look at the facts, analyze it, and then reach a conclusion. Finally, we should never turn history into theology. Islamic aqidah, Islamic belief, does not come from, from history. That's not the field of this discipline. You may have better understanding of history than I do, but history is history. We should not give more value to history than, than it has. We need just to look at history as one of the disciplines that has its own methodology of study. And again, we might reach different conclusions. That's normal. That's expected because we're dealing with tons of information here and there, and maybe we analyze it differently. But history remains history. We cannot turn our history or confuse our history with our faith and belief and say, from this moment, if you agree, then you are in. If you disagree, you are out. Because a historic event that took place, no matter how significant it is, but Islam has been completed and perfected before the death of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa ashabi ajma'in. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum fastaghfiruh.
الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الخلق والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد عباد الله تقوا الله وعلموا أنكم ملقوه يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اللهم إنا أسألك الهدى والتقى والعفاف والغنى اللهم إنا أسألك رزقا طيبا وعملا متقبلا اللهم أصلح لنا دينا الذي هو عصمة أمرنا وأصلح لنا دنيانا التي فيها معاشنا وأصلح لنا آخرتنا التي إليها معادنا اللهم اجعل الحياة زيادة لنا في كل خير واجعل الموت راحة لنا من كل شر يا حي يا قيوم برحمتك نستغيث فأصلح لنا شأننا كله اللهم لا تكلنا إلى أنفسنا طرفة عين ولا إلى أحد من الناس يا رب العالمين اللهم كن مع إخواننا المسلمين المستضعفين في, أرض في كل مكان من أرضك يا رب العالمين اللهم كن مع إخواننا الجوعة في مضايا في, سور في, في سوريا اللهم أطعمهم من جوع منهم من خوف اللهم احفظهم بحفظك واكلاهم بعنايتك ورعايتك وامدهم بمددك واحفظهم في بلادهم وديارهم وانفسهم واولادهم يا رب العالمين وارحم الراحمين وصل اللهم على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اقم الصلاه الله اكبر الله اكبر الله اكبر الله اكبر اشهد ان لا اله الا الله اشهد 